we're back at it guys welcome back to the refined lad today i'm going to be talking to you about manipulation and relationships how to detect or spot uh, red flags in your partner so to lay the groundwork i think for in particular from what i've seen in my generation i'm generation z there is a lot of hookup culture. There's a lot of values that are no longer placed upon the ideals that maybe our parents or grandparents had. And I'm not going to get into my own thoughts on that today because what I really want to focus on is how we've been framed, right? How our generation in particular has been exposed to certain things, right? That would cause us to inevitably think about like a computer and we're just being downloaded into right and we don't know where this content is coming from but it's pushing it's pushing a certain plan right and us as kids I already went over with you guys we've been over a few of the stages we all know about PAJ's cognitive development stages um, for children and so at a particular age if I was to place a three-year-old for example myself I was at a babysitter's house, we'll, we'll do this. I was at a babysitter's house when I was four years old. And what was on the TV was Lord of the Rings. And I watched Lord of the Rings, three, three, four years old. Now, back where I used to live, we had a shower in the, on the third floor and then in the basement. And I had to take showers in the basement. So I distinctly remember, even as I got older, four, five, six, always peeking behind the shower curtain because I literally thought like an orc or something was going to leap out because how horror movies or things that traumatize us work on the body is they work on the subconscious, right? And we have to remember that the subconscious cannot differentiate what is fantasy and what is reality in the situation. Same reason why we go to horror movies to get scared. At some point, we no longer feel like we're in the movie theater. We feel like we are in the horror movie experiencing everything that the actors are. So we can all agree that if you expose a child to a certain level of content at an age, right, whether it's violence or something scary, that it can cause them to have thoughts or fears that are literally initiated into their mind, body, soul, spirit. And so I want to discuss today how in particular our generation was force-fed a lot of the Disney content. We love a feel-good movie, right? Dumbo, great movie. Scariest scene? When it looked like Dumbo was basically on an acid trip. There was all the strobe light effects and the different colors. For a little kid, that's probably pretty traumatizing. So Disney pushed this Disney and storybooks have pushed this content, right? And the content simply is the mythos of the prince and princess archetype. Now we all know how it goes, right? The prince has to slay the dragon. He's worthy of recognition. He has to go to foreign lands and doesn't know what he'll encounter. And hopefully at the end he rescues the princess. But the other aspect of it that we don't realize that is kind of put in there, right, is this aspect of, I have to show her, I have to do this, I have to, and you think about those three words, right? The prince has to prove himself to the princess. Kind of sounds like validation in a very non-masculine form. When a man is fully present in his masculine, it doesn't matter. He doesn't have to show up, right? He automatically shows up. He puts the work in. He's a grinder, 100%. He's on a mission. He's got his purpose. He doesn't care about measuring up to other people's standards because he has his own. So here's the issue. We've discussed having um, like the rose-colored glasses in our past, right? And that's this distortion of what the reality actually is. The rose-colored glasses are our perception. You'll often find people who are in manipulative relationships or who have been abused, when their friends tell them who the abuser actually is or what they're capable of doing or that they've seen, and they're trying so hard to convince this person that they've been victimized or abused, but this person isn't willing to see it. Because it all goes back to a quote that I heard from an anonymous source. And if you know, please comment it below because it's life-changing. 
They said, are you truly in love with that person? Or are you in love with the idea you have in your head of that person? Because that makes you take a step back and realize, well, logically, now that you're saying that, maybe I don't feel that way. So, and I can tell from my own personal experience, when we are in a relationship and we think we found the one, we want to settle down, right? We ignore all these other red flags, right? People are throwing red flags left and right. Stop, stop, stop. They might actually be an abuser and they might be manipulative. So are you truly in love with this person or are you in love with the idea that you have in your head of that person? Because these are two parallel universes, two distinct separate realities. Well, actually, one's a perception, one's a reality. But now, before I get into a quick, like, deep dive of this, I do want to preface that I genuinely believe that there is more good in this world than bad in this world. I would chalk it up to simply this. I don't think everybody evil, everybody who is evil is deliberately evil. I do believe that some people are acting out of hurt, they're acting out of wounds, they're acting out of things they haven't worked through. I believe this is what Jung called the shadow archetype, right? This is this dark part of us that we haven't really fully healed from, and so we're kind of like lashing out at others, or we do things subconsciously without realizing it, and it hurts those around us. But at the same time, I also believe that there is people who deliberately try to manipulate. There is people who deliberately try to control and harm others. And I think that's incredibly effed up. I have my fair share, like I was saying, of playing the nice sweet guy, right? Especially in high school, in about my freshman year of college, I had some really rude wake-up calls. And as a result of this, there was a particular girl that I met my freshman year of college. She had a lot of things going for her. We had a lot of things in common, and we had th some things that weren't in common. At times, it seemed so fake, but at times it felt real. It was kind of like up, down, up, down, up, down, and I couldn't really piece it together because I was just so happy to finally find somebody I resonated with, which is another danger um, when we're dating, and, and this is another reason why I don't promote hookup culture, is you're just like serial dating, right? You're just like sitting down, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I, I don't think that that is a good way. If you guys are substantially trying to settle down and create a family someday, that's not the way, but y'all are going to do what you do. Well, first she was very sweet, right? She's like, oh, I see this. Oh, I see a future together. Oh, here's our house. And at first it scared the hell out of me because I'm like, ah, I don't usually talk to people who talk like that, right? Now, I didn't understand that this was kind of a form of love bombing. This was like way too soon. Most people that were looking from the outside in would be like, yeah, you're kind of rushing things. This seems unhealthy. There's something off here. But hey, I ignored the warning signs, kept on walking, you know. And so, little by little, my time was just getting consumed with her, right? I was starting to make her, like, my everything. I couldn't wait to get out of class to go see her and meet up with her. We'd spend time together. And it's like, that is such an unhealthy way to live. And now that I'm teaching men and, and fully learning how a man should act and how a man should lead and how a man should pursue his work, as well as women... We don't chase women, we pursue them. That I realized now how off I was. So one of the key things that they like to do is they make you have a split decision. If I ask you, hey, I need you to come this day, and then you rebuttal with something like, well, I don't know what I have going on, and I go, make up your mind now. They force an impulse decision to prevent you from thoroughly thinking through, thinking through, through your brain because they're already trying to control they're already trying to manipulate but I think the strongest barb but I think the strongest tactic that I encountered through all the manipulators I've had in my life is they will do anything and everything they can they will throw barbs at you to slowly chip away at any self-confidence that you have because a person who has no confidence in themselves a person who has low self-esteem is much more easily controllable than somebody who has high self-esteem because I am absolutely looking for validation 24 7 to what you think of me and I'll ask you it'll almost become 
an obsession because I just want to be validated so much. And this is why a lot of these manipulators will find people who have past trauma. One of the most beautiful things to somebody who likes to manipulate a situation is they will find past trauma. They will find childhood abuse, right? Maybe it was a traumatic event. Maybe you had accidentally killed your dog. There's all these incidences and they will try as hard as they can to pry at your past to understand. Now I'm not saying everybody that asks you about traumatic events isn't trying to get to know you. But I'm letting you know, be warned now, that this is something that can and will be used against you if it is with the wrong person. And this is why I strongly advise whoever you go on dates with, if you genuinely think that there is a connection there, to thoroughly get to know them. If that is your goal. I got much more information to share with you guys. So if this resonated with you, hit the notification bar. I release videos weekly. Like, comment, and subscribe. And if you guys want to see more of videos on manipulation or spotting red flags in relationships, leave a comment below. I will get back to you soon. And as always, stay frosty.